last time on Salem Machete. We don't have power, okay? We can't make water. It's probably dead. After our quattro died, Daniel sent off our defective unit and wired up a smaller multiplus to get us by in the meantime. We got our new and improved dinghy davits installed, and Daniel's parents made it down to Grenada. We didn't waste any time seeing the sights around Grenada. Daniel's poor dad injured his Achilles tendon at the beginning of the trip, trying to impress the kids with his cannonball skills. Are you ready? Yeah. Vic. <laughs> his mobility was limited now, but we still had a great time. It was easy today with two kids because uh, Ma and Papa's got the two girls, so we just had Jack and John. The kids wanted to take their grandparents to their favorite hangout, so we took Daniel's parents to La Faire Blue for wing night so they could see the fun the kids have with all their new friends. We toured Annandale Waterfall and the Belmont Estate. Daniel's parents had never been out on our boat before, and they had never been sailing, so we took them out for a few hours, and the wind was perfect for it. While I waited for the sun to shine, I was crying on my own. It was all a waste of time, all along. Yeah, I waited through the sun. Daniel's parents stayed at the Radisson on Grand Dance Beach. It was within walking distance of the dinghy dock and close to restaurants on the beach. This made it easy to go back and forth between their hotel and our boat. Ma, you see that? Cat What you working on? This generator. This is the old water pump. Started leaking, that's the pump for the raw water cooling. It started leaking salt water. 
was dripping down on this uh, fuel lift pump. Uh, so salt water corroded it. Uh, the, uh, the water pump was leaking pretty bad and dripping down on that. And causing a lot of issues. So I uh, had to order the water pump and the fuel pump. Finally got it in. There's a new fuel pump. There's a new water pump right here. Um, I think the rebuild kit for that one was like 350 or you could get a new one for 500 so I got a brand new one because this one's in pretty rough shape and I didn't know how good it would be rebuilding so got a brand new one trying to put it on got a brand new fuel pump and put it on probably gonna change the oil and already change the fuel filter while I'm in here so hopefully we can get this back going so we can charge our batteries on days when it's cloudy and Maybe run the air for Gemma every now and then when she's hot. Yes, I'm always hot. It's hot here in Grenada. Now don't do not my floor now. the fuel pump I need that fitting out of there so I can put a hose a little hose bar I need that fitting so I'm trying to get it out of this old one but it's all corroded in there. Uh oh getting the big locks out I know Daniel's serious when he goes for that tool. He uses that tool for everything. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't know what we do. We didn't have those. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is like the number one tool to have on a boat. Those or at Michelin. <laughs> <laughs> Your blue channel locks. It don't matter what he's doing. He's going to have those blue channel locks. And this blue tool bin that was left on our boat when we bought it. <laughs> Ugliest toolbox ever. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it helps keep the salt water air out. Maybe I don't know. That plastic bin you think keeps <laughs> keeps the salt, salt water, water out? out. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. When it splashed on it. But you wouldn't know it by looking at them channel No. Or everything else in there. Oh, advice, getting a feet. Getting a feet. You need advice or advice? Advice. A vice, like smoking, drinking, <laughs> getting the feet. Go use your feet. You don't have a vice. You look at look at like a little monkey. Oh, it broke loose. Over. Use some toes. <laughs> Get your feet out of here. They always do. I knew it always do. Let's see. How's it been going, Dan? Uh, I'm gonna work on it a little more here in a little bit. You got some of it out? Yeah, but my pump keeps getting stopped up with rust and whatever else. So, so what are you doing? What's going on? Where that uh the raw water pump was leaking down in the generator compartment. There's a bunch of salt water still sloshing around in there, so been trying to I pumped out all I could with my big pump now I got a little drill pump I'm trying to get the rest of it out I mean it's it's a thin layer but it's a big compartment so it's hard to get but I got these guys uh they're working on the windows on the boat next door they're supposed to be swinging back on their way to get their clothes on uh bedding our windows and caulking our windows and probably just caulking everything around the boat as well while they're here the, Caulk around these windows and all the small windows, and probably get them to look at our emergency hatches too.
What are you doing? Just testing out these set screws on these cars. All right, so here's what we got. When we were in Florida, we replaced this car, this car, this car, as well as we put this new top car in for the square top sale. Um, we haven't attached these yet because we didn't really know how to attach them and we were going to attach them on the way down, but they're not really critical. It's just another good attachment point so it can be tight. To if you remember, Daniel and his friends had to rig the sails because we had a terrible rigger in Florida. Yes, so the sail maker put, he attached the sail right here by sewing these on here because he couldn't get these set screws out because they get all corroded. He couldn't get them out, so he just sewed this on here. Which after researching, it's common practice just to use like little like, some people use Dyneema or some people use little bungees like to just tie it. Clip right it, around. yeah. So I'm not real worried about that. I'm trying to decide if we should replace all these other cars because they are old. They're still, they're still moving. I mean, they, the bearings are still at them. They still seem to be free. But in the event of a hurricane, we're supposed to remove our cells and the best way to remove it is take these set screws out, pop the pins out and take it off. Right? We well, how much it? is a car? I mean, you're talking probably two or three hundred per car. What? Maybe more. The bigger, these are bigger. These, these are called intermediate <laughs> cars. These are the main cars. So in the event of a hurricane, how would we remove our sail? We couldn't get these out. I guess we would take these off. And just get that. Yeah. Yeah, and get a price. I mean, because I, like I say, this one's new, this one's new, this one's new. So we need one two three four five main cars so that may be about two grand one, two intermediate cars but yeah but while we're doing this while we got the sale off i mean this is the best time to do it otherwise and you tell me that screw can't come undone that's the, the only thing that we that the issue is y'all can't drill that screw out to drill it out uh it can take a lot of time i mean you could drill it out then retap well, it. i got more time than i got money just these bearings, which are just little, I forget what the material is, but there's little balls in the back of here. They're very expensive. All right, I got some with these kids. All right, well, I'm just gonna, I gotta make a decision. I wanted you to be a part of it. I don't wanna be part of it. You, you make that call. Just, you, just I don't, don't wanna spend be, too much money. Just don't spend any money. Kind of get put, turn it a little bit towards Daddy. There you go, just a little bit. There you go. Where are we going? Petite Martinique. We got out of Wobble Bay and we're kind of found a little bit of freedom to want to get out more. So we're leaving St. George and go head up to uh, Petite Martinique uh, from our friends. So they call some lobsters near there. So uh, we're going to try to do that. We also got a huge tuna. So we're going to put out some lines as we get out a little deeper and try to get some. Let's try this new bait. It's a teaser. And this is supposed to be like chasing this and supposed to entice whatever to bite it. So we're going to have some luck. Haven. I'm gonna go over that. Daniel's got that 
teaser up, so we'll see. We're going about seven knots. We're motoring. Um, there's no wind. We only have four knots of true wind speed, so there's no wind. It's super calm, super flat. Hopefully we catch something. It should take us about five hours to get to Petite Martinique on the north side. It's like past the main island of Grenada. There's some smaller islands and that's where we're headed to. So change of scenery, pretty excited. You can wear them for free. Well, can you tell me I can have them? Stuff all over the lure, so I'm gonna reel them in and clean them off. Put the mug out now. were caught on our way to Petite Martinique, we started to wonder if the new teaser was just that, a tease. Our kids didn't waste any time jumping in the clear waters of the northern Grenada Islands. We walked around the island of Petite Martinique before heading back to the boat for dinner and to work on some projects. The dinghy dock here was one of the trickier ones we've seen. Can you unloop it? I'm going to have to get out to unloop it. No, no, no. Try to unloop it. Alright, if you can unknot it. What's going on, Dan? What you doing? I'm replacing this hatch lid over here, over Jessa's cabin now. Um, like I said, it's real easy to just to pop these lids off and just put a new whole lid on rather than trying to rebuild them. Uh, it only takes like 10 minutes to pop one off and pop a new one on. So uh, I would recommend this rather than trying to rebuild one. They're expensive, but everything Lumar makes is super expensive they own the the industry in the hatch world on all boats so they price things whatever they want to you just have to pay for it 
and uh, yeah, we should have replaced all these before we left, but hindsight's 2020. Popping these lids off, real easy. 